Okay, I have tried to film this four times and there's someone who's mowing their lawn. You wanna move from Toronto to Vancouver and you wanna know what Vancouver is all about. Well, I can tell you that because I moved here about two years ago. This is now my third summer here in Vancouver. And yeah, I just thought I would share my experience, what it was like, why I moved, what I like and don't like about Vancouver and whether I wanna stay. So if you're looking for stuff like that, let's get into the video. Probably one of the biggest things that people wanna know about and it's housing. So what are the apartments like here? What's it like to rent? What's it like to, I don't own actually who has money for that, but uh, what is it just like finding an apartment here? So when I first moved here, I actually stayed at UBC for a bit, like two weeks, because in the summer UBC rents out their, uh, I mean their residence rooms, like hostels, so you can rent like one day a night, um, or one day or two days or three days or like a week. It's just like booking a hotel. You can like book residence rooms and it's like super cheap. I think it was like hundred bucks a night or 50 bucks a night or something. It was pretty cheap and um, I think it was like 50 bucks a night. Mm, I can't remember. It was really cheap though. And I did that for like two weeks until I found a sublease. And then I subleased for the summer. And then I actually got um, a full on apartment. Looking for apartments, there are tons of apartments in Vancouver. It's really interesting because I feel like in Toronto, everyone li wants to live downtown. And that's kind of like where people are looking. Whereas in Vancouver, there's so many surrounding areas that people want to live in that no one, at least that I know, like wants to live downtown in the downtown core. There is Kitsilano, which is where I live somewhat. I live close to it. There is a Commercial Drive. There is Main Street. There is Olympic Village. There's the West End. There's Yale Town. There's Gas Town. There's all these different pockets that seem to be more popular than actually living downtown. So that's interesting. Um, for me, my big deal was that like I wanted to live by the ocean. You know, I'm not moving across the country. Sorry, my dog is like whining to get up onto the bed. I'm not moving across the country and not to live by the ocean. So that was like a big deal for me. When I subleased, I subleased at Commercial Drive and I subleased a laneway house. So if you don't know what laneway houses are, I'm from the East Coast, I had no idea what it was. It's like this backyard house. A lot of people in Vancouver, because Vancouver is a lot of like residential, it's a lot of streets um, than Toronto. It's like a lot more houses and like, um, older apartment buildings. So you get these things which are laneway houses and essentially people just created like a mini house in their backyard that usually has tiny, tiny bedrooms, but is a great way to like get um, a space in like something nicer than like an actual apartment building. My friend, he sub he rented a two bedroom uh, laneway house and it was like really cheap. Like I think he paid like, I don't know, like less than a thousand, like $800 each, but their rooms were tiny. Like I'm pretty sure you had a single bed, but you do get your own little mini house. Like it's like a full on house, so. Think about all the privacy, like just like the ability to have a house. Often there's yards, like things come up every day. Everyone here uses Craigslist, they don't use Kijiji. In Toronto, I feel like people use Kijiji and Craigslist from my experience, but uh, maybe that's phasing out, I don't know. But in Vancouver, it's only really Craigslist or like Facebook Marketplace. So yeah, I find rental prices, I mean the same as Toronto. Like everyone was like, man, you're not gonna be able to afford to live there, you're not gonna be able to afford to live there. And I'm like, dude, it's like the same as Toronto. Like I see no difference except for there is a ton of like I said older apartment buildings whereas I feel like Toronto is like a lot more condos here it's like these older apartment buildings with a lot more character um and yeah so so finding an apartment was really hard for me because I have a dog if you have a pet do, like good luck moving to Vancouver because for a city that is so like for the environment and for like animals you would think and like just like nature like, I don't know for some reason in my head when you think of like Vancouver you would just think like oh yeah like dogs like totally because everyone here has one no like three fourths of the, the apartments here don't allow dogs. It's the weirdest thing. And in Toronto, you can like get around it with some bylaw thing, but here you can't, like you're just, you like either don't or you do. So I found a place that has dogs and I had to pay a pet security deposit obviously. And it was just like luck, but I know so many people that really struggle to find an apartment because none of them accept dogs or even cats even. So places are so strict. I didn't find housing to be crazy over expensive. Um, you just have to find an area that you like and are willing to buy for like some are gonna be more than others like if you look at kits right by the water it's gonna be more expensive than living farther out on like commercial the sky train into downtown sky train into water it's just kind of like dependence on what area you want to live in and yeah i would say like you can get studio apartments bachelor apartment one bedrooms they're just like they're just like toronto really but just like a lot more older homes and less high-rise condos really okay so culture what is it like to actually live here to be with the people here to be among vancouverites so vancouver is not very diverse there when you live in toronto there is people of all color there is you're like there's just so much like culture and just so much 
Whereas here, it's very like white and Asian. The culture just isn't necessarily as diverse as Toronto. So that is really interesting as well as like there's not, there's no one that speaks French, which is really funny because I feel like when you grow up in Ontario, you're just like used to hearing people speak French all the time because Quebec's right there. And I don't know, I just feel like it's a very larger like French speaking province. Whereas here, like not a lot of people speak French. So it's just so interesting how you just like never hear that anymore. But anyways, um, so I would say it's not very diverse. There's a ton of like Asian culture in terms of like restaurants and like um, like markets and events and stuff like that. Like it's that there is a lot of like a big like Asian culture here because um, there's a large like Asian community here. So it's definitely a huge presence. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't find it very diverse. Really. And like I said before, like it is such an active uh, city. Like people just bike, they rock climb, they hike every weekend. People are doing like something in the woods. Like literally like, I used to think I was so active, but now after moving here, I realize like I'm not that active. Like after work, what are people doing? They're working out. On the weekends, what are people doing? They're hiking, they're skiing, they're mountain biking, they're surfing. Like people just, this is such an outdoor community that like literally to live here, you need to be doing something outdoors. You don't need to be, but it's just like what people do here. It's part of the culture. After work, what are you doing? You're grabbing beers and going to the beach. Like it's just so outdoorsy. So if you don't really like the outdoors, I'm not sure if you're gonna really love it here because that is what so many people like base their lives around here is the outdoors. And and with culture comes with, you know, meeting people and making friends. And I will have to say that Vancouver is one of probably the worst cities to make friends in. And this is something I did not know when I moved here. So when I moved here, I didn't know anyone. I had never even been here before. I didn't know a single soul. I don't know, it's pretty ballsy, I guess. But I just assumed that I would meet people through like everyday life. And that is what I did for a bit. But it is definitely a hard city to get a group of friends in because it's just a known thing. And I feel like you don't know it until you live here. It's just everyone who's grown up in such a small knit, because there's all these like little communities, like I said, within Vancouver. And I feel like so many people grow up within these small communities and they're just like, they have friends. And then they have friends within these small communities and they don't like need to make more friends. So therefore they're less willing to introduce more people into their friend group because they already have these friends that they've grown up with and have experienced life with. So it's very different. Whereas I feel like Toronto, there's so many new people coming and going all the time that like, anyone's like oh come hang out come hang out like come join this come join that and it's just like a lot more welcoming so yeah that was really hard for me the only way i actually i met a lot of friends through my work but after a while like my only friends were coworkers, so i had to use um i didn't have to use i chose to use bubble bff because i'm not very active like i said like i think i'm active but i'm not that active and I wasn't gonna just like join a volleyball club personally because I suck at volleyball and I wasn't just gonna join like an art club because that's just, I don't know, there's just like like not those things that I like doing. Like I ended up joining a pottery class and I met people through that, but really before that I wanted to make a core group of friends. So I used Bumble BFF and I met like a really great group of people um, through that. If you don't know what Bumble BFF is, essentially there's Bumble, which is like Bumble for dating, so meeting guys, which I don't recommend. The men here are not great. Um, and then there's Bumble BFF, which is the version where you can like swipe through to find girls you like. And it's so funny because I have like literally a group, like a pretty good group now of like six people or seven people, maybe more. And they're like all from Ontario. So it's just crazy because it's like, I don't know, it's just funny how I've made this massive group of friends and they're all from Ontario, like it's just so weird. But um, yeah, so definitely like there's ways to meet people but you have to put yourself out of your comfort zone because you're not just gonna meet people by sitting there and waiting for people to come up to you because that's just not what they do here. So that is something that is definitely just something to note when moving here is that you're gonna have to make yourself uncomfortable if you're not if you're not already comfortable doing that and really just put yourself out there to meet people. It's okay, so a transit. So I would say it's pretty similar to Toronto. I would say one thing I miss is the go transit. Like I loved that and being able to just like you just get so far on go. We're here like they have the ferries which is cool but um there's always long there's really long waits and to get to a ferry and you know a car you have to take like three buses. It's always like a shit show. Um but they do have pretty good buses that run pretty often, I'd say. Sometimes they're late, but what can you do? And then they have their SkyTrain, which which is equivalent to the, the subway in Toronto, which is pretty good, but doesn't necessarily run as frequent as the subway, I would say. Um, but the good thing is here is like our weather isn't really like that bad at all. So um, in terms of snow like and transit isn't really affected by weather. Like it's only like one week, the one week it snows of the year that it's affected. Whereas Toronto, I know there's like a lot of delays and stuff because of weather, so. Just keep in mind that like the winters run pretty smoothly as the summer and transit's pretty equivalent. You can get around anywhere really by transit. Definitely get around. And we did just get Uber and Lyft, which is pretty awesome. And also something I didn't mention was that car shares is huge here. I didn't think car shares were a big thing in Toronto, not that I know of, but like car to go which recently left, but was huge or like Moto or Evo are huge. So like 
people don't own cars here because it's like really expensive to own a car. Like if you want to bring a car over from Ontario, do not bring your car. Apparently I've heard from watching other YouTube videos, it's like more expensive to bring your car over and get it insured here than to just like get a car here. So insurance is like hella expensive. I don't even want to like know what it's like to get a car here because I heard it's like fucked. But um, there's a lot of car shares. Like if you want to rent a car for a day, it's so easily accessible. People just like, like not, I'm not talking enterprise. Like there's these things that called like Evo where people just like literally pick up a car with the app. Like you just pay for this like one time fee and you can like rent this car whenever you want. So that's like what people do all time on the weekends. They just rent Evo, pick you up, rent an Evo, pick you up. We'll go and do this, we'll go and do that. So it's very easy to get a car and very quick. You can have a car in a matter of seconds. So that's really nice because I feel like no one literally uses transit here. It's really funny. I would say food. Like I said, there's a very high Asian population here. So there's a lot of Asian food. So lots of good um, sushi, you know, you're right by the ocean. So it's really fresh. And there's a lot of um, cool like dim sum places and just like different um, food that I'm not really, I haven't really grown up like eating that in my small town in Ontario, which is like totally cool to be exposed to like so many different cultures of food. Um, it's definitely a lot here. So yeah, um, in terms of prices, I would say it's like pretty similar to Ontario as well. Like I know some people are like, oh my God, groceries are so expensive, but no, it's pretty much the same. Um, I would say that going out to eat is way cheaper here because in Toronto, you have some sort of tax. I don't know what tax is, but it's like 15% on food. Here, there's like no tax on food. Like you literally pay, no when you go to a grocery store, I mean, when you go with a group of friends and you pay for a meal, you don't get like any tax on their food. So it makes it very easy to go out and eat all the time. So I definitely do go out and eat a lot and I do you have a lot of cool restaurants. Oh, also vegetarian and veganism is so big here, I would say, because it's just like the West Coast. I feel like that's just part of the culture is a lot of people just don't eat meat. So there's a ton of alternatives if you're vegetarian or vegan. I would say probably like the best restaurants in Canada are here. There, there's so many good options, bakeries, everything. Like literally you could totally eat vegan and, and um, or vegetarian here and you just have like unreal food. Like everywhere you go, there's like at least like some vegetarian or vegan options. It's uh, it's really nice actually to know that that's really promoted here. Okay, so lastly, the weather. <sighs> so I moved here for two years, like I said, and at first I was like, oh my God, it's so mild here. I love it. Like F the cold. I'm so in love with just being able to constantly wear like um, a light jacket and that's it. Like it's so nice but you never see the sun. And my first year moving here, it didn't really affect me because I was so in awe of the city that I didn't really notice it. And I was just like, oh, I love Vancouver. I felt like I was on a vacation. Like I was just like so in love that it didn't really affect my mood. The second year, um, last year was the hardest winter for me. We went a full month without seeing the sun. And at first I always thought like, you know, the winter makes me miserable. I don't like the cold. I don't, it's not something I enjoy. Like obviously I want to move. Like I'm just gonna be a happier person, but really I'm honestly miserable when I don't see the sun. And I feel like even at work, like people, you can just tell there's just like a mood that you get when you go a month without seeing the sun and it just makes you a very unhappy person. So it rains here all the time, like literally all the time. And if it's not raining sometimes, it'll just be cloudy. So it's like this cloudiness that's like this haze that's like makes you feel so dopey. Like it literally is like that right now outside and I just feel, let me show you. Let me give you live footage of this. This, it's like this all the time. Like, I don't even know what it is. It's just cloudy and it's just like very, like it's very hard to get up in the morning and it's just, it affects my mood and it sucks because like, it's like this 70% of the time and then the one time the sun comes out, the one day of the week, this place is like, unreal and so amazing it makes you want to live here like the rest of your life but you only get that like one day a week so it's like is it worth it i don't know so i definitely did notice it less when i was in office working but being home all the time because of covid i just am not enjoying the weather and it also doesn't get very hot here nowhere here no one like anyone has air conditioner because you don't need air conditioning because it never gets that hot there's about two weeks in the summer that you want to have air conditioning and that's pretty much it but i would say it generally never gets like really really hot like even in the summer i've been wearing this a wool coat like every day and it's july it's july 1st tomorrow that's nuts in ontario it's like 30 degrees you can't even wear like a t-shirt that's sweating it and leaving your house so it's just different it's like a coastal weather it's the, the sun is really the heat it's very little humidity um so i don't know honestly at first i thought this was like my life and this is like what i wanted but now i'm unsure because i just feel like the sun affects my mood to be honest so there's that and then it does snow like two weeks of the year um but like it's so funny because it'll say it's like sunny for a week but then all of a sudden it ends up raining so it's like 
anything you do or it'll be like the opposite it says like it's not going to be raining and then all of a sudden it'll be sunny so it's almost like you have to plan your weekend and just go with it even if it says rain or sun and just expect that it is going to have rain or it is going to have sun like it's like so unpredictable that and that's just like part of being by like a coast like like so closely to the ocean stuff like that it's just like the weather is just like constantly changing so if you can handle rain and you don't mind like this hazy like fog thing it's not fog it's, i just feel brain fog when it's like this but cloudiness then definitely move here like it's warm you're never gonna have to need like big winter boots but just know you're barely gonna see the sun um in the winter when it does rain you can go to the mountains and the sun's out but that is if you are willing to like grab all your gear and go up there and wait in lines after work like i i thought for some reason i was like oh yeah like i'll just go and like swim after the work in the ocean but that's not what people do here i swim less to anything when i was in ontario i swim in lakes all the time now when i live here i never swim in lakes which is just because there's just like the ocean and I guess I could go and drive out to a lake, but that's just not something I really do here. It's weird. Whereas like, again, I thought I would just like go to the mountains like on my weekends, but I don't know. It just, it takes a lot more effort if you don't have a car to go up there. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's a very active province that people love to be outdoors, whether it's rain or shine. And if that's for you, then definitely move here. But um, yeah, that's just my opinion about living here. Um, I didn't wanna talk about work and what's it like to work here, but I work in tech and it's pretty good. There's a few companies out here. I would say there's more interesting companies for tech out here than there is in the East Coast, and specifically Toronto though. I'm sure New York has a ton of jobs, but yeah. So if you're in tech, I would say there's a really good industry, especially e-commerce. There's a bunch of big fashion brands like Aritzia, Lululemon, Mac. There's some cool companies, Amazon. You can work at Microsoft. I'm not even sure if those offices are necessarily in Toronto, but they're pretty present here. So tech is really good. Um, and yeah, I've never really worked full time in Toronto, so I have nothing to compare it to. But I heard here the culture is pretty chill. Like people just clock out when it's like five o'clock, like no one takes their work home with them. Whereas I've heard in the East Coast, people just like continue working all night. So I don't know, definitely some considerations when moving here. Hopefully this gave you some advice or some insights of what it's like to live here from someone who's from Toronto. Um, feel free to ask me any questions down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And yeah, if you wanna know whether I'm gonna stay here or not, I don't know. To be honest, I do not know. So we'll see. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope this helped in some way and I will see you guys in the next one.